My name is Yolanta Silamatula, MD, PhD, Medical University of Vienna, Department of Cardiology. My research focuses on antiplatelet treatment with a special interest in response variability to platelet inhibitors and personalized antiplatelet therapy. Well, primary prevention means that the drug is used um, in individuals who might be at increased risk for ischemic events, but without an established coronary heart disease. So aspirin has been widely used for primary prevention uh, for cardiac ischemic events um, in patients who had a risk of more than 10%. But um, the use of aspirin primary prevention is very controversial, as the data um, do not clearly support the assumption that um, the benefits clearly overrides uh, the risks. So, um, the Italian group by the Berardist published a study in JAMA which um, focused on uh, aspirin-associated risk in a general population. And um, the investigators find out that aspirin increases the risk of uh, bleeding complications by 55%. Diabetes itself was a risk factor for bleeding, but not aspirin use in diabetic patients. Probably the most important strength of this study was a very large patient population of um, over 370,000 patients, um, especially of diabetics, which uh, were represented in 56,000 patients. And these numbers largely um, exceed the numbers which um, have been previously reported in meta-analysis. And um, the second very important issue is that um, this patient population included in the study uh, represents a real-world data, uh, which means that participants um, included in the study uh, were um, not really selected uh, like it is in some randomized trial. So the study has two important uh, strengths, the very huge sample size and the not selected patient population. Well, number needed to treat um, represents a very important um, part of the picture in determining and, um, and in, in the application of a given treatment. So um, the number needed to treat tells us how many patients do we have to treat to prevent one event. So what's important, there is no general accepted threshold level for the number needed to treat. Um, and what's also important, the number needed to treat for the prevention largely differs from the number needed to treat of the underlying condition. So, for example, when we take a cardiac patient, we have statins. So, the number needed to treat in the secondary prevention with statins, which means in patients who had already a heart attack, is about 20 to prevent the, another heart attack. The number needed to prevent one death with statins in the secondary prevention is about 48. But the number needed to treat with statins in the primary prevention of cardiac, uh, of, of heart attack, is between 100 and 250, which is probably not satisfactory. When we take aspirin into account, the number needed to treat 
for the secondary prevention is 40 to prevent one heart attack. And the number needed to treat of 84 is a number needed to treat for primary prevention of cardiovascular events in diabetes might be still satisfactory. But the problem is, which is more, most important, is actually to weight the benefits against risk. So if you take the secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease, we have a clearly favorable risk to benefit ratio, which is probably we can prevent six ischemic events of an exceed of one major bleeding. But for the second, for the primary prevention, it's not, for, not so favorable, which is two to one. The use of aspirin in primary prevention of cardiovascular disease in patients with diabetes is unclear. That's why we do need the results of ongoing randomized trials, and there are two trials uh, on horizon, uh, um, except this study, uh, which is a randomized study investigating um, the efficacy of aspirin and statins for primary prevention of cardiovascular disease in patients with diabetes. Uh, this is a study uh, which will include 5,000 patients. And we have an, another study, uh, which is an ESTEN study investigating the efficacy of aspirin and um, omega-3 fatty acid for prevention of cardiovascular disease in patients with diabetes. Um, this study will include uh, 10,000 patients. And uh, we should have the results of the both studies within the next three years. We should um, judge the aspirin use in the, prim in the primary prevention um, considering the high bleeding risk of our patients. So we would need um, um, some helpful tools like some calculators, which would incorporate the, these two different aspects, which means the bleeding risk and uh, ischemic risk. So the, we need um, a future studies uh, investigated um, whether such a tool or such a risk calculator would help us um, physicians make appropriate um, decision about aspirin use in primary prevention. But um, now, as we don't have such tools, uh, we should, of course, follow um, our guidelines. <laughs>